Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I have two questions this time, interesting questions from a viewer. Such theme might create some misconceptions and misunderstandings, including in my surroundings. The first question is about the influence of fictional characters upon us. Can that benefit or harm us in real life? The second question is how to distinguish between enjoying art and using it as an escape from reality. I wanted to simplify it by talking about the difference between art and entertainment. I like having those two questions in the same video because we can use them to answer each other. Let's start from the second question, the difference between entertainment and art. I found this theme important because even in personal conversations when I try to explain it to amateurs, many times they start rolling their eyes even before hearing what it's all about, as if they were experts. This is the damage of such general cliches where people become so ignorant, but they think they are 10 steps forwards and have the confidence to roll their eyes. So I'm just leaving this here and those who would like to listen can benefit from that. We've talked about art in the past and we explained it that it literally means earth. We are talking here about earthy material. This earthy material can contain substance and can also be a substance that contains a substance. So everything that is made out of earthy material, earthy matter, is literally earth, art. Anyway, this art, like any other earthy matter, contains substance. This substance can be vital, toxic or empty, where it creates the illusion of substance, empty. Just like in physical consumption of food and drink, we also consume spiritual substances in music, theatre, literature, fine art, etc. Music is only the art, but which spiritual substance that art channels, that's something else. Whether it is vital or toxic or empty, just like food and drinks, it can be vital or toxic or it can be empty, an illusion of something, of substance, where someone brings an empty glass and tells you there is water inside. We talked about this in the past. So what I'm trying to say here is that entertainment is a substance that is contained by art. The same thing with pornography and propaganda. All of those are substances that are channeled by the vessel of art. If you see an artist bragging about his genius fancy technique, like a fancy glass, you are someone who's thirsty for inspiration in this case, or for spiritual substance, you would say, fancy schmancy, where is the water? I'm thirsty. Are you scamming me? If you are not thirsty, or if you have, let's say, you've lost the sense of thirst, then you'd be distracted by the vessel. Wow, what a nice art. It is entertaining. Thirst is a sense, like vision. It is an awakened, sensual channel that is connected with reality, with the needs and emotions. Someone who is thirsty would prefer a small glass of water rather than a big, impressive, empty glass. That's why we see governments invest in entertainment, calling it art, or invest in propaganda, calling it journalism. Yes, entertainment is art and propaganda is storytelling. The question is how much they reflect reality and how vital the substances are to inspire life to those who consciously choose. And I will use this now to answer the first question about storytelling and the influence of the character upon the viewer. There are characters that are designed by artists who aspire to inspire universal values and life. And some characters are designed by political agendas that aspire to recruit soldiers and policemen, etc. Just in case you wonder why there are so many police TV shows and films where they present the FBI and the CIA as heroes, while we know how much damage they cause humanity, even many superhero films that inspire dignity and courage, many of those films have been hijacked to become glorification of loyalty to the bureaucrats, whether they are right or wrong. There are stories that have been created by awakened artists and use the protagonist in order to inspire awakening, like the stories of Buddha and Jesus and Muhammad and Neo from the Matrix and Superman, etc. But very soon, 
such stories have been distorted, whether Jesus is not the one who paid his life for the truth, but who sacrificed himself for our sins. Where Buddha is not the one who throws the whole kingdom and the palace away for the sake of sovereignty, but this is the one who's making meditation. That's why you see people attached to every materialistic aspect of their lives, but they make yoga and meditation. Away Muhammad is not the scapegoat orphan who inspired the philosophy that gave humanity algebra and fields of science that are still inspiring the human civilization until today. Or Neo and the Matrix, where it stopped being the story of the one that faces the slavery system, but became a purely action film series. So just like in physical life, we want to be aware of what we consume, what we eat and what we drink. The same thing also here with spiritual consumption. If one can afford not caring, then good for you. But I'm talking here to those who can't afford failure and loss because there is no mommy and daddy to save them. To those, I say that we need to be aware of what we consume spiritually, what values this art contains. If you consume one toxic piece, you might not feel the damage. But if this becomes a habit, then after some time, you might find yourself gradually in a bad place, emotionally and intellectually. Thank you for the comment. I hope I could inspire. Thank you everyone for staying with me. I'm Shredi Jabarin. Ciao.